Hey guys, Ray from Lovey RV. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing a lithium battery from a company called Amper Time, and it's a 12 volt, 200 amp hour battery. Now, I get a lot of requests from uh, a lot of these Chinese battery companies for me to review their battery, and the most of them I decline because they're basically all sort of the same. But this one had a few features that uh, kind of perked my interest and I thought may be of interest to my audience. But uh, disclaimer up front, this uh, was sent to me free as a review sample. Uh, one thing uh, that uh, I thought would be good for people is they do have quite the presence on Amazon. You can see it's a, they're an Amazon seller and uh, lots of uh, ratings here. So they're not kind of like fly-by-night company. They've been around for a while. They seem to have pretty good... Uh, um, back up to them and support and also the battery they wanted me to check out was one that has self-heating low temperature charging because a lot of the problems with these uh, cheaper end uh, Chinese batteries is they don't put any kind of low temperature protection in them it's one way they kind of reduce the cost but this one actually has a self-heating uh, capability so if you have it in extremely cold temperatures when you first connect it, it has heating pads inside and it'll warm up the battery inside. Uh, another thing that uh, was of interest to me is they also were available in Canada and they had a Canadian store and everything, which for my Canadian uh, folks out there, getting lithium batteries can be a problem sometimes to be shipped to Canada. And also they were going to send me out a charger to check out. Um, they actually sell different uh, amperage of chargers for the batteries uh in they do have a 40 amp which was what i wanted to test out but they didn't have it in, at the time in canada for shipping so they sent out the 20 amp one anyway in this video i'm going to go through and uh we'll check out the charging and discharging rates and we'll also do a capacity test make sure it is 200 amp hours there i'll check out the heating pad function and we'll also pull it apart and take a look inside and see how it's constructed so let's get to the video. So first thing I'm going to do is charge, fully charge this battery. I'm going to use their charger here. You can see when you plug it in, you get one LED. I'll turn it on. There's a switch at the other end. Second LED comes on. And I've hooked up a little uh, meter here. Tell me voltage and current. So we got 19.2 amps going into the battery right now. 20 amp charger so that makes sense. I'm going to just let this go until that LED goes green that'll be when it's fully charged and then we'll come back and do a capacity test and see how many amp hours we can get out of this battery. It's rated at 200 amp hours. Okay so we're fully charged. I'll let it run till the light turned green there and it stopped taking current shows 14 volts coming out of that box so now I'm going to put a load on it probably around 200 watts and we'll let it run and see if we can get to 200 amp hours out of the battery check its capacity okay so it looks like it passed the capacity test I ran it around 100 to 200 watts the whole time um, kind of an average load an RV would put on a battery in between time you might use the microwave or whatever but around 100 200 you know you run a tv a computer and just the the regular 12 volt loads that are in an rv and it actually did a little bit higher than 200 amp hours it kind of kicked off at around just before 202 amp hours so past the capacity test now i'm just going to charge it back up here and we'll try a, a high amperage discharge uh, one of the drawbacks of this particular one is it's a 200 amp hour battery, but it only has a max 100 amp discharge, which usually a 100 amp hour battery has a 100 amp uh, discharge. So you could usually get two of them to get 200 amps, but we'll test it anyway using my inverter just to see what it does. So for charging, I'm just using this uh, charge converter here. Kind of simulating if I was running a, a generator. It puts out right around just under 50, 50 amps. I um, also have my solar going right now. It's putting in about 20 amps. So we're putting in 68 amps there, around 70 amps. 
They say recommended is around 40 amps and the max is 100 amps. Uh, if you go any higher than that, there's a, a the battery management system will, will cut off the charging. So this just kind of simulates if I was out boondocking and I was trying to get a quick charge in and had my solar coming in and also had a generator running at the same time. And I'm basically going to charge in about two and a half hours. So not too bad. Uh, next I'm going to do a discharge test. So it says it can do 100 amps. Right now I'm doing about 17. It's going to turn up this uh, power station. I can bring it up in 100 watt increments so I can slowly bring the discharge rate up. Now we're up around 40. Go to 800 watts here. That's the fan on my inverter kicking in. 70 amps. Up to a thousand watts. Right around 90 amps. All right, 1100 watts. There we are, 100 amps. Exactly 100 amps. And wattage is 1,285 watts. So we'll kick it up. Another 100 watts, 1,200 watts. Actually putting out 111 amps right now, so it's above what it's rated for. Hundred and twenty three amps. Seems to be handling it fine. Twelve point six nine volts, so the volts aren't sagging very much. Interesting. Let's go to fifteen hundred watt load, so it's gonna because of the inverter inefficiency it's gonna need more, so it's eighteen hundred. 60 watts, drawing 148 amps. Huh, seems to handle it no problem. Let's go up to 1600 on this. Issues. Hundred and fifty eight amps, so it's far above what it was rated for in its manual online, so it's kind of leading me to believe that maybe that's wrong. Maybe in that battery there's actually a two hundred amp BMS. Well, after I do a, a self-heating test, I'll take the battery apart and we'll have a closer look, see for ourselves, but it seems to be able to handle that no problem.
hive tool does a pretty good job. So here we go. Got her apart. It actually was pretty easy. It looks like the lid is just epoxied on. It's kind of a hard epoxy. I was able just to crack it open. You can see the actual handles are part of the bottom part of the lid. So that's nice. Then you can't, if it was part of the top lid, it could pop off. Um, anyway, there's the battery management system and it actually looks fairly stout. It's got a pretty good sized aluminum heat sink and they've just sort of uh, taped it on the top there. Underneath that, this yellow part appears to be the heating pad. You can see over here, it's attached to the positive terminal of the batteries. And there's a second one that's at the bottom and it goes down and connects to that. So there's actually an upper heating pad and a lower heating pad. Um, they're using eight gauge, pair of eight gauge wires to connect to the, the terminals. Um, everything is uh, glued. All the connectors have a little bit of a, kind of a little bit of a glue to keep it in place. So that's nice. And I'd like to kind of, this is just taped here. So I'm just going to take this apart. So maybe we can flip it over and maybe get a number off that uh, BMS there. You can see it has some different wires coming out of it. Um, there's uh, these black wires on each side. There's four of them and they go down to the the batteries there and they're kind of glued to some of the cells so I imagine they're probably your over temperature sensors I think right here there's there's another uh, sensor glued here that goes back and I'm thinking that's the one that's maybe doing the low temperature anyway we'll check that out kind of give you a look back here um, unfortunately the bottom part they've set the whole um, battery uh, all array of batteries is just sitting in a big huge thing of foam epoxy so you'd really have to hack at it to get it out which I'm not going to do. Okay got the tape removed get a look underneath there looks like they just put some double-sided tape underneath to hold it in place as well so basically that BMS is just taped in place. I can see the label here it does say 100 amps 100 amps so I guess uh, Maybe it can run for a number of minutes above that. I didn't let it go long enough for it to cut off. So I have a little test bed set up just to test the self-heating aspect of the battery. Um, I got some ice water here and it's showing about minus one Celsius. Let's see here, minus one. I have a temperature probe in there. And then I have one of the, the um, temperature sensors off the battery dipped in there as well. So it's actually triggering the heating pads on. Over here I have an amp meter and you can see almost six amps is, is going through the two heating pads. It's putting in about uh, 80 watts, so they're probably about 40 watts each. So seems to work as advertised. That heating pad is warm to the touch. Give you a look down in there, you can see that kind of spongy stuff. It's kind of an epoxy that everything is set in on. And see where the battery leads attach. They have this kind of plastic standoff, and then there's a metal bracket at each end of the battery, and then they have uh, sponge rubber in between. So looks like it's uh, fairly well built. But I did notice that they they specified in the manual don't turn it upside down and if you turn it sideways to contact them so uh, maybe if they figure if you turn this upside down there's a chance if this stuff isn't stuck properly it could you know get dislodged because most of the batteries that you you get they'll say that you can put them on any direction you want when you mount them but this one did specify not to turn it upside down and i can see why anyway doesn't look too bad for a cheaper end battery and i like that the lid actually came off fairly easily so say say this thing failed the battery management board 
failed and you had to replace it, it wouldn't be so awfully hard. You wouldn't have to saw the battery apart. You could just just clip off that epoxy like I did and get at it. Looks like the cells though are uh, laser welded to the terminals there. So I have to say it's a little curious why this would run above 100 amps discharge rate, which is what's in the manual, like I said. So I'm just going to try another test and just use my heater here, crank it up and I'll see how long it, it will run, see if it shuts down or not after several minutes. Put our timer on. Go. What are we drawing? 125 amps. Let's let her go, see if she shuts down. Well, I'm above the five minute mark. I'm still going. So it was drawing 127 amps. Yeah, I'm going to try pushing it higher, see what happens. Hundred and seventy seven amps. You would expect it would shut down at this point. Two hundred and two, two eleven. That sounds like my inverter is uh given up. Not sure which shut down the inverter or the battery. So I don't really like that that it, it safety uh, function didn't kick in even at that high amperage, unless it is a two hundred amp hour. BMS, but it says 100 on it, so and it says that in the manual. Anyway, I think I'll have to get a hold of them, see what's going on. Okay, so I emailed AmperTime, and they had their uh, technical support get back to me about the the being able to charge above the 100 amp hour capacity that they rate it for. So they say, number one, our battery is designed to replace the lead acid battery. However, there's no BMS design for lead acid batteries. So our BMS will be designed to be surplus in overcurrent capacity for different customers complex use scenarios with a long duration current of 100 amps and a short duration current of 300 amps. So they're saying long duration continuous 100 amp. Two, a short period of high current load through the BMS will not cause damage because our BMS for MOS tube transi translation thing there is the existence of high temperature protection. When the internal temperature of the BMS reaches a certain temperature, the BMS will cut off the current circuit to protect the role of the BMS. If the environment temperature is low, the internal temperature of the BMS will rise more slowly and overcurrent capability will be better. So basically they're saying, you know, it's I, I tested it in an ambient temperature somewhere around 11, 12 Celsius, around 50 Fahrenheit. So they're saying that the BMS will allow more current through until it hits a point where the BMS senses the temperature is getting too high, then it will cut it off. So they kind of have a 100 amp hour rating, but it can go higher. It's in number three, they say a short period of high current load will not cause damage to the battery cell. The batteries we use are automotive grade cells, which can carry a continuous load of 200 amps. But we do not recommend customers to use with such a high current because there is a certain impact on life of the battery. So really, these have 200 amp hour cells in them, or 200 amp cells in them. So that's why it was able to 
to discharge at a much higher rate. So that makes me feel a little better. They're basically down rating their battery, but it does have the capability of a higher amperage. They're just saying they don't recommend probably to extend, you know, the life of the battery. So I feel much better I got that answer. Anyway, let's go with some of my uh, pros and cons as I see them for this battery. Uh, we'll start with the pros. First of all, very economical price. Um, they also have free shipping and pretty fast shipping only on, in a lot of places, only a few days. Um, the, I, currently, they're on sale in the U.S. for $9.99, and in Canada, they were $13.29. Uh, and that's pretty good. They're self-heating, so you can charge down to minus 4 Fahrenheit, minus 20 Celsius. And, and like I showed you, if the battery is cold, those heating pads will come on and warm it up to the point where it can start charging. Um, it seems to be a very popular brand on Amazon. Lots and lots of reviews and pretty good reviews. Uh, they seem to have a pretty good support system as far as I can tell by reading reading people's replies and stuff. They seem to get back to people. And they have four different distribution centers in uh, the USA, so they can you know ship from different places. As I guess that's why they get pretty fast shipping. The manual, I was pretty impressed with the manual. It was a pretty in-depth manual and well well uh, written with lots of diagrams and stuff. Um, also, it's kind of neat they have the, the they sell the actual lithium chargers. I tested the little 20 amp one, but like I say, they have 40 amp ones as well. Uh, as far as cons go, there's no Bluetooth app. I'm kind of getting used to the ones that a lot of the ones I'm reviewing come with a, a Bluetooth app, which is really handy to know what's going on in the battery as far as voltage and current and capacity life left. Um, they only have five year warranty. Um, also, they're a, China-based companies, so versus some of the U.S.-based companies, of course they're more expensive, but you get probably a little better support. And a lot of the U.S.-based companies are offering 10-year warranties or limited lifetime warranties. Um, the case is sealed, which is good in one way for for kind of waterproofing, but it's kind of a hassle if you need to take it apart um, to do anything. Um, also, the BMS, I didn't like the way it was kind of just taped in there. You know, over time, if you, if the batteries you create heat inside, some of that tape may get brittle and start to break, and then your BMS can be floating around in there. I didn't like how they kind of used a spray foam goop to kind of hold the cells in and everything. Makes it a little harder if you had to change a cell. Um, I guess they really don't want you doing that yourself. I guess it's just basically a battery where you have to ship back to get any service done. And it's also, I guess, how they how they can keep the price down. Anyway, overall, for an inexpensive battery, it seems to be pretty good. Um, I'm going to actually take it down south with me um, on this trip. We're heading down for the the winter time, and I'm going to. I got in my my unit. I've got four line energy batteries, kind of the core <clears throat> system. But I've got a, a battery switcher in there, so I'll be switching over to this this battery and using it to over. Give you, and I'll come back with a a longer term review. Let you know how it's performed. Um, for me while out boondocking. So that's it for now. Until next time, Ray from Love RV. Cheers, everyone.